So we've discussed the neoclassical production function uh, and also defined what it means by good X to be capital intensive and good Y to be labor intensive. We want to expand that to look at the overall trade-offs uh, between these, uh, producing these two goods using a production possibility frontier, PPF. So this is the neoclassical P, uh, PPF. And let me just, uh, so we've got uh, production of good Y on this axis, we get the production of X on this axis. And let me just draw this and then I'm gonna, going to explain it in, um, uh, in just a moment. So graphically what you can see is that this, this is a bowed out uh, PPF, sometimes referred to as concave to the origin. Now this is in sharp contrast to the um, to the Ricardian model, where the, um, the, the, the PPF was a, was a line, was a, 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 linear, a linear function. So it's a, uh, the, the, the trade-off uh, in the PPF is, is, uh, is, is quite different in the neoclassical framework. Now, if you recall, the slope of a PPF the absolute value to be uh, more careful. In general, in everything that we're going to do, the slope of the PPF is the opportunity cost cost of X in terms of Y and is equal to the marginal cost of X compared to the marginal cost of Y. So this is, you know, this is a very general uh, result in all the different uh, versions of a PPF that that you're going to be seeing in this uh, in this course. Now, if you look at this PPF, you can see that the slope of this curve changes as you produce different combinations of x and y. Just geometrically, if you will, okay. The slope of the PPF up here is relatively flat. As you produce different combinations of Y and X, the slope gets uh, steeper. Slope gets steeper. So as you increase the production of X and reduce the production of Y, the slope of the PPF is getting bigger in absolute value terms. In other words, we have an increasing opportunity cost of X. The ratio of the marginal cost of X compared to the marginal cost of Y is increasing. So that's just the, the basic relationship looking at the, at the graph. We've got, with this bowed out PPF, increasing opportunity cost as you produce more of a good. So let's think about the, the economics of this. So let's imagine that you're starting out really with a very high level of production of Y and a relatively low production of good X. So you're taking all of your resources, labor and capital, and you're really shoving it into the Y industry, the labor intensive industry. And We've got this relationship that they use labor and capital in different proportions given a, um, uh, the cost of labor and capital. So these, uh, these two industries really use labor and want to use labor and capital in different proportions. And let's imagine that you reduce the production of Y by, say, one unit. And so Labor and capital are going to be both going into the X, X industry. Okay, so you've got some trade-off that is uh, that occurs. So we've got a an increasing level of X production when we move resources, labor and capital, out of Y and into X, and we have this trade-off. 
okay, this slope is changing. And if we increased the production of X even more, that trade-off increases. Slope goes up. So what's going on here? What, you, what you're essentially doing is reducing, what, what the Y industry will do is will release initially a bit of labor and a bit of capital, but it's going to try and retain as much of the of labor as it can and get rid of uh, relatively more uh, uh, units of capital initially because it's going to try and retain what it is that they, that they need or especially a value. And so the X industry is like, hey, that's great. You know, I'm getting a relatively large amount of capital, a little bit of labor. What I really want is capital, so that's, uh, that's okay. So the trade-off between those is relatively, uh, is relatively modest. Okay? So the, the opportunity of producing more X is relatively low because what the X sector is getting is combinations of inputs that are particularly well suited to increase production of X. Now, as you produce more and more X, that Y industry is, is starting to you know, give up labor and capital. And the combinations of labor and capital that the X sector is receiving is increasingly inappropriate, if you will, to what the X sector would like. And if you think about going down to really almost complete production of, of X, specializing in X, what's left inside the Y industry is really, I mean, they're really trying to hold on to their labor. And so what, what's going to be happening is if you, when you get down here is that the combination of inputs that are coming into the X sector is really kind of a labor, you know, quite labor intensive bundle that is being released to go into the X sector. You can produce more of, of X, but it's going to, the trade-off is going to get higher and higher as you, as you get down into this, uh, towards the X-axis. Bottom line, with the neoclassical framework, you have this trade-off that really relates to the, the different intensities of labor uh, and capital. If they were equally, um, if labor and capital would be equally useful in the two industries, you wouldn't have this kind of, of increasing trade-off that you see here in the, the standard neoclassical uh, PPF.